Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... George Neville, walking in the dawn light of the mews in which Steed lived, was stopped by a voice from the shadows. Neville. George Neville. Here. What the devil? The impact of the bullet spun George Neville round and he fell among the dustbins. John Steed and Emma Peel, hearing the shot, tore out of Steed's apartment. George! George, what the... George! Steed? Steed, is he... George, who... who did it? It... it... it was Rostov. Uh, uh, uh. The Avengers. Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Coldwater Omo has really powerful cleaning action. Mrs. Senior discovered this. My husband wears overalls to work, and they come back very sort of greasy and dirty. My girl actually does them by hand in the tub, but she uses cold water, Oma, and they're fine, and they come up perfectly clean. They say once an Oma user, always an Oma user? I've sucked the cold water, Oma, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. Cold water, Oma, cleans best. can choose from Benolia's five new classic fragrances. Episode two of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel find themselves up against prisoners who are their arch enemies, Prisoners who are determined to get away. John Steed had held a small reunion with two of his best friends, Paul Ryder and George Neville. Mrs. Peel had also graced the occasion, which had been a great success, starting with cocktails and dinner and continuing with music and reminiscences until the early, or rather the late, hours of the morning. Paul Ryder had left first, walking home through the park. George Neville had left after helping Steed and Mrs. Peel drink champagne in the chilly light of dawn. Then, as Steed and Mrs. Peel were clearing away the party debris, they heard the shots from the street below. Neville had died in Steed's arms, naming his murderer. Later that morning, Steed rang Mrs. Peel at her apartment. Hello? Steed here. Oh, Steed, I was hoping you'd ring. Do we meet this morning? Not yet. I'm going down to Marlow, Old Hill Monastery. I'll call you from there later. A monastery? It's a cover for an international spy prison. The man who killed George Neville escaped from there. I'm hoping to pick up a lead. You think this is serious, don't you? Neville being killed? Just about the most serious thing that's happened yet. Could be the beginning. I'll keep in touch. Oh, please do. I'll, I'll help all I can. Steve. I know you will. And, Steve, I'm so sorry. Thanks. Bye. Bye. at Old Hill Monastery, Steed submitted his pass to a monk at the gate and was allowed into the main building. Colonel James rose from behind his desk in his office. Oh, Steed, good to see you. Colonel, uh, take a seat. I prefer to stand, if you don't mind. George Neville is dead. You know that. I heard. Yes, sorry. He was a good friend of yours, wasn't he? He was one of my best friends. Now, Colonel, why the devil didn't you warn him? Warn him of what? But Rostov had escaped. The news of Rostov's breakout was circulated through all the normal channels. Colonel, you should have warned George personally, and immediately it happened. Steed, I'm sorry, I don't entirely follow you. Why George Neville in particular? You don't know. You knew why Rostov was being held here in maximum security. Of course. He was involved in the great assassination plot. He, Lubin, and Esdorf. Is that all you know about? Steed, 
It is my duty to maintain security in this building. We have more than a hundred of the most dangerous agents in the Western Hemisphere incarcerated here. I can't be expected to be familiar with every detail of their crime. <sighs> Bureaucratic bungling. I beg your pardon? Oh, you can't be blamed, but, but someone should have made sure that you knew the whole story. Well, in this case, anyway. I don't understand. Colonel, the great assassination plot was very simple. Three of their top agents were smuggled into England to kill three of our top agents. Each of them had a target, and Rostov's mission was to murder George Neville. Mission accomplished. Indeed, Indeed, I had no idea. I know. No. Well, the thing to do now is to stop it happening again. That means we've got to find out how Rostov escaped. Show me his cell, would you? Yes. James made the necessary security precautions and took Steve down to the cell. Well, I just don't know how it could have happened. Well, this place is built like a fortress, and you know how tight internal security is. No one can open a cell door without the right password, and that's changed every hour. Here we are. Now, this is Rostov's cell. Ah, Baxter. Ah. Uh, this is John Steed, Lieutenant Baxter. See, he was first on the scene. Well, tell me what happened, Baxter. I was making a routine check, and there uh, wasn't any cell. It was empty. I reported, got permission to enter. And when you stepped in, you found he was here, eh, right, Baxter? Steed moved around the cell, noting the barred window, testing it, testing the walls, going to the table which contained personal possessions. There were several magazines, most of them on natural history. A couple of bottles of liquor... An empty vodka bottle used as a flower vase with a single flower in it. Steed listened to Baxter at the same time. I swear to you, sir, I, I did check through the scanner of the whole area, and he wasn't in here. What about the bars? He couldn't have been hiding there. He was just not in the cell. And then? Well, then... Then he, he appeared right beside me. He just, just appeared, like... Like... Like magic, eh, Baxter? Well... Oh, yes. All right, that'll do. You can go. Thank you, sir. Mr. Steed. His story's unacceptable, of course. Rostov must have been hiding in here somewhere, and yet... Yes, I don't know. I wouldn't have thought Baxter was the type to make mistakes. Plus the fact that there just isn't anywhere a man could hide in here. Could Rostov have tampered with the scanner? Well, we've checked it. Results negative. Let's see, Baxter entered here. Searched around in the bathroom. Then came back and Rostov materialized here, right? Right. He clobbers Baxter <laughs> like that and makes out of the door. Well, then where? James led Steed down the passageway and round the corner. Facing them was a bricked-up wall. Here. He disappeared right here. Hmm. Solid enough wall. I told you. The whole thing's impossible. And yet it happened, Colonel. It happened. The hourly check? Half hourly. We've stepped things up since Rostov got away. I'll do a round myself. Mind if I come along? <laughs> James led Steed down the passageway, and they inspected each cell. Outside Lubin's cell, they stopped. Lubin, hmm? Reading a magazine. Looks harmless enough. Steed, you said each of these three men had an assigned target. Yes, that's right. Who was Lubin? Paul Ryder. They stopped outside Esdorf's cell. And his? Esdorf? He was the ringleader, the most dangerous of the three, and the toughest. Yeah, yes, but his target. Who was he sent to kill? We don't know. We interrogated him for weeks. We, we couldn't break him. He never told us who his target was. I'd like to talk to this man, if you don't mind. Well, very well. Colonel James produced a walkie-talkie and called his office. Yeah. Oh, uh, Edwards, open up Esdorf's cell, please. Password, Colonel? Damson. Right, sir. Esdorf. Carl Instead. Carl Ian. I've been expecting you. After us just escape, it was inevitable that you should come to question me. Let me look at you. Mm-hmm. You don't change. No, you? Externally, perhaps not. You go to great pains to ensure my physical fitness, but internally, yes, inside I change very much. I'm resolute. Well, you were always that. More resolute. And bitter. Incredibly bitter. A drink. Thank you. It's good to see you, Steed. Good to know that you're still alive. Oh, I never thought I'd hear you say that. Let me give you a toast. Your freedom. 
<laughs> it's been a, a long, long time. Hmm. How do you occupy yourself? You have no books. I think. I ruminate. I plan. I'm immensely proud of Rostov, of course. I trained him, you see. He's my protege, and he's free. And Sven Lubin has gone too. Lubin? Oh, he will be next. You can't keep us here much longer. First Rostov, then Lubin, and then me. You're bluffing. Perhaps. Or perhaps not. Steed heard the warning bells. It could only mean another escape. He leapt to the door. Let me out of here. You have me out. Let me out. In the corridor, all was confusion. Colonel James was leaning against the wall, holding his head. Who was it? Lubin, Lubin, I, I didn't see him. Well, where is he? He must have come up behind me. And he's heading for the east wing. Oh, don't worry, he can't get away. The men are converging on him. Where's the walkie-talkie? Edwards, bright scarlet alert. Warn all exterior guards. Nobody and nothing to leave the ground without a triple check. Personal transport, supply wagons, a lot. Right, sir. Uh, Colonel Jesus, uh, what is it? You got him? Uh, no, no. The men, the men converged upon him from both sides of the east wing. They met. Uh, they heard his footsteps, and then they, they stopped. The prisoner had just disappeared. <laughs> Message received, right. But why, Steve? There's been another getaway. Now get hold of Ryder and warn him. Tell him that Lubin is free. That's all. Tell him Lubin is free. Right. Get going, Mrs. Peel. comes a new way to fight tooth decay for keeps. New fluoride for keeps toothpaste. It's the clear blue way to fight tooth decay, and it's the best anti-decay toothpaste around. New great tasting for keeps toothpaste. The clear blue way to fight tooth decay for keeps. New family fluoride for keeps toothpaste. They say once an OMA user, always an OMA user. Here's Mrs. Senior of Mboggan Sweeney. I've stuck to cold water OMA and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. There's no dirt or stains that can stand up to cold water OMA. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. Oh,